The foot that you need to sew on buttons on the Bernina 880 comes with this machine. So foot number 18 is the button sew on foot. You see it's got little black grips to it, a little, uh, little tongue sticking out the middle. So if you want a shank of thread, you can actually adjust how high that is. We love to add buttons and these are tassels. I teach you how to do tassels in our Bernina Stitching Cosmos online course. I hope you'll check out the 10 free videos that we have in the YouTube video description below. But adding button, buttons to an item is super fun. So no more hand sewing of buttons. There's actually a built-in stitch for this exact technique. So we were just playing around with how to do the different types of buttonholes, how to get to them on your screen. So make sure you check out those videos as well. But what we do find is the stitch for sewing the buttons on is in the buttonhole menu. So to get here, we were at here, I'll back up to a straight stitch, touch the buttonhole tab, and it's on the second page. So make sure you arrow to stitch number 60. Stitch 60 looks like a picture of a button, and uh, we will need to actually choose the right foot. So 3C is not the foot we'll be using. And when you touch it, you're gonna notice the yellow star always indicates the one you should be using for the stitch you have picked. So now the machine will be happy with me. The other thing that's gonna happen when we sew this stitch is the feed dogs have already be, been automatically lowered for me. So you, normally that's something we always tell our students to do. Everybody lower your feed dogs, except if you're Bernina 880 or some of our upper end Bernina models, they will lower the feed dogs for you. So super easy to actually do. So this foot does have the option I mentioned about the tongue being there for like a little bit of a shank of thread. So there is a place on the side that you can loosen this and actually flip it up and out of the way. So you actually um, take the screw out, flip it up, and then reattach it. And the finger is instead of here, it is kind of up and out of the way and sticking straight up so you don't actually um, have it in place. Why would you wanna move the little finger in the first place? That um, if you're sewing buttons on like I was with the quilt, we don't need any extra th thread for say another piece of fabric to button to it like you would on a garment. Here we just need the buttons to be stitched flat and as close to the button as possible with no extra shank. But I'm gonna leave that in there so you can see how cool it is. When you do notice the stitch, we if you do have a button with four holes, you will be doing two holes at a time. So you'll go back and forth and then you'll choose the other two, line them up and then go back and forth. So let me show you a couple tricks about getting things lined up and positioned with the foot 18. So you do notice that the stitch width that is defaulted on the screen is four millimeters wide. Now most buttons will be that distance. It's actually quite uh, an optical illusion. Even though you might have a larger button, you might actually notice that that is the size most of those holes are drilled. But you always wanna double check that you're fully lined up before you stitch so you don't break your needle. Now, since this one is a four holer, a little trick is to actually stitch the front two or the two holes closest to you and then when you're done and especially if you're doing it with the little pin in place that when you're done and you need to roll back you are like sliding that tongue away from what it just did and then you can easily do the the two behind it it also helps with smaller buttons that way if you are having trouble with much of the foot fitting or sitting on a button um, by doing the ones that are a little bit closer to you gives more of the uh, feet room to sit on the small little button that you're asking it to stitch. Do note that you can always adjust the stitch width. So if you do have an odd button that you can actually adjust it to be bigger or smaller. So I am a fan of lowering the needle down into one of the holes. Now, did you notice that the needle was already on the left side? That's why I had it drop into the left hole. So I'm gonna lower the presser foot down with the button and it does kind of pop back up. So as I go ahead and I'm gonna use my foot control here because when I use the foot control, it will actually 
put the foot back down and watch it's going to do a stitch and then it's going to jump so right now you can see that it's going to stitch in the right side so i'm going to just hand i'm hand turning the needle down into that hole as soon as i have seen that the stitch is going to land in two holes go ahead and finish stitching uh, so if this happens to you um, i'm noticing that i'm actually not stitching yet you will find that your bobbin thread is just it's trying to come up and hasn't connected because of this the height of this particular button so let me actually show you what i would do so i'm going to just lift up the presser foot and you'll see that you don't have any thread showing here so if you can bring up your bobbin thread so you can get a hold of it i'm going to just take a another stitch and then that way I can get a little bit of that thread to pop up watch my little trick here see now I have bobbin thread I'm gonna pull this up it's sometimes when the thread cutter cuts that um, it's just a little too short to actually connect when you're sewing through a button so obviously I need to get back to the beginning of that sequence the easiest thing to do is touch right here that is pattern begin and you hear the needle reset back to where we started and we'll do those steps again. Sink the needle down into the left hole, lower the presser foot, and then step on the foot control until it takes the next stitch and jumps to the right. Hand turn that needle until it lands in the hole. And then watch, there's actually a couple locking stitches throughout the sequence. It will stitch, or stop when it's done. There's the last one, and you can use the thread cutter, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. It does pick a hole to go in. And then since this is a four hole buttonhole, let me just show you what I would do. So I will slide this towards me, and then again, and if you wanna take it all the way off that little tongue, you can go ahead and do that. And again, you're reselecting the left hole, lower the presser foot, test until the needle comes over to the other side. Make sure you don't hit the button and stitch it. Oh look, variegated thread. So I actually have one pink little guy and one blue one, that's hilarious. All right, so now you do see that these threads are a little looser and that's because of the tongue that we were stitching over. But look, it's perfect for actually getting fabric underneath there, but probably not what you want if you're using these decoratively. You'll have removed that so you can stitch them directly onto the fabric. So I hope you'll try out some different ways of sewing buttons on and have some fun. Apparently variegated thread is one way to do just that.